Studio Rack. It's a pretty unusual plugin by Waves. Now Waves have just released a new version of this plugin. It got completely overhauled and it kind of reminds me of something. Now anyway, in this video, let's try to answer the question, Waves Studio Rack, can Studio One do that? Super C. Okay, now what is Studio Rack? Well, Studio Rack is a plugin. It loads as a plugin. And within that plugin, you can combine other plugins from Waves to form what they call a completely new custom plugin. Let me quickly show you. Okay, now here we are in Studio One. As you can see, I have two tracks. Let's start with the first one. I've loaded a synthesizer on the first track, which is absolutely not relevant. What is relevant is that I've also loaded an instance of Studio Rack on this track, and this is what it looks like. Now, as you can see, we have eight different slots, and now we can bring in plugins from Waves into these slots. So for example, let's say that we want to add an EQ. All right. Mm, okay, now apparently the only thing that I own that comes close to being an EQ is Shep's Omnichannel, but it'll do for demonstration purposes. Okay, that's loaded into the first slot. Now let's add something else. Berserk, why not? Now what I've done so far is basically the same as if I would load these plugins onto the track itself. But now here it comes. I can also add a split. We have two flavors. We have parallel splits and multi-band splits. Let's start with the parallel splits. Now what happens is that now the signal has been split up into two identical copies, so to speak. And I think we can have up to eight different copies. Yeah. Um, and now of course we can treat these copies uh, different. You know, so for example, we can also bring in a plugin on this copy. So let's add something else again. Uh, one knob weather, not even sure what it is, doesn't matter. Uh, we can bring in other plugins and then we can mess with uh, the, the panning and also the, the, the width, I believe. Yeah, uh, volume and things like that. And of course, as I mentioned, you can treat all those splits differently. And in the end, when you combine them again, it'll form potentially a very complex um, sound or variation. Now, as I mentioned, we can also have multi-band splits. Now, multi-band splits is very similar to a parallel split. The only difference is that now it is split by frequency range. And I think you can have up to five different splits, yes. So, as you can see, the first uh, band is from, well, probably theoretically 0 to 92. The, the second one is 92 to 545 and so on. So again, it's basically the same as a parallel split. I can now, uh, you know, treat the different frequency ranges differently. And in the end, I can combine them to create a certain sound. So that is the routing in a nutshell of Studio Rack. What we can also do is use macro knobs. So if we go here, you can see that we have eight knobs, macro knobs. And what we can do with them is we can assign, uh, we can assign basically any parameter of any of the plugins we've used in Studio Rack to one of these knobs. So for example, um, let's go to Shep's Omnichannel and take just any of the knobs. So this one, all right. Right click it, add macro, and let's add it to macro knob one. Okay, let's go back to the macro knobs. And now you can see that something has been assigned to macro knob one. Now we can add more parameters to this knob. We can add multiple parameters to one knob. And as you can imagine, it is a pretty cool tool, a pretty cool feature to have. You know, it, it can potentially save you a lot of time, for example. So that is a very quick overview of what Waves Studio Rack is and what it can do. Now let's go back to the question of today. So can Studio One do that? Is there something within Studio One that we can use to kind of do the same? Well, let's take a look. Okay, now let's focus on the second track. As you can see, I've also loaded an instrument on the second track, which by the way is equally non-relevant. Let's focus on the plugin. So let's add a plugin. Let's add an EQ. All right, this is an EQ. Let's add something else by clicking this plus. And let's add a compressor. Okay, now, so far, pretty familiar, right? No matter which DAW you're using, by the way. 
But now let's open the routing settings by clicking on this little button. So these are the routing settings. Still, we're seeing the same as on the track. So we have an EQ, we have a compressor, that's it. But now you might have already spotted it. Just like within um, Studio Rack, we can also add a splitter here. So let's add a splitter here. Boom. Now in Studio One, we can have up to five different splits, regardless of what type of split. So that's a little different from Studio Rack. In Studio Rack, we could have up to eight parallel splits or five multiband splits. Now Studio Rack has two different types of splits, so parallel split and multiband split. In Studio One, we have three types of splits. So that is a normal split, which is kind of the equivalent to the parallel split. We have a frequency split, which is the equivalent of the multiband split in a way. But we also have a channel split. So if you have a stereo signal, it can split it up in one mono channel left and one mono channel right. So that is a little extra feature in comparison to Studio Rack. Now one thing in Studio Rack that I haven't seen in the channel editor as it is called in Studio One is, as I showed you before, the panning settings and width settings of individual uh, splits. I haven't seen that in Studio One. So I guess that's a little point for Studio Rack. Now other than that, it is exactly the same. Well, except for one huge thing, but we'll get to that in a minute. Now also, if we take a look at the macro controls in the channel editor of Studio One, it's exactly the same. So here we have also eight knobs, just like in Studio Rack, which we can assign different parameters to. So for example, let's go to the compressor and let's just choose any of the controls. Let's say input gain, let's right click it, connect input to channel macro control knob one, Boom. Let's go back to the macro controls and here you can see it's there. By the way, if we if we click this little wrench up here, you can see all the connections and how everything is mapped out. But anyway, you know, this is very, very similar to Studio Rack. Okay, again, back to the question. I think it's pretty clear already, but still, Waves Studio Rack, can Studio One do that? Well, what do you think I'm gonna say? Of course, very convincingly, yes. In fact, I think the channel editor in Studio One is a bit better than Studio Rack. And why? Well, first of all, because of the interface. To give you a little example, in Studio Rack, if you make a split within a split, all of a sudden a new window opens up. Now, it's not the end of the world, but in Studio One, that doesn't happen. In Studio One, you'll have everything nicely within one window. Um, and overall, I think personally that the interface of the channel editor is a bit smoother and looks a bit smoother than Studio Rack. But most of all, why I think it's a bit better, and this is a huge thing, is that with Studio Rack, you can only use plugins from Waves. You cannot use any plugin from another vendor. Whereas with Studio One, you can use any plugin you like. So that is a huge advantage over Studio Rack. So in conclusion, now if you are a Studio One user, and I should say a Studio One professional user, because keep in mind, channel editor is only available in Studio One professional. So if you are a Studio One professional user, then don't even bother with Studio Rack because you already have the channel editor, which in my opinion is even better than Studio Rack. So don't bother. Um, and also if you're using another DAW that has similar features built into it, which I don't think there are many of at the moment, but I'm not really sure about that. Anyway, if you do, don't bother with Studio Rack, which is not to say that I don't think that Studio Rack is a great tool, because I do think it's a great tool. So anyone who's using a DAW that has not uh, similar features built into it, Studio Rack can definitely be a great tool, can be, but only if you're using a lot of Waves plugins. Otherwise, obviously, it would be kind of useless. So I think that's about it for today. I'm going to stop talking. But first, let me ask you, so what do you think of Studio Rack? Or what do you think of the channel editor? Or if you're using both, 
Do you have a preference? Let me know, leave a comment below. And also, if you want to see more videos like this, then don't forget to like and subscribe. For now, I'm going to say goodbye. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you soon.